Okay, so what do we have here? Well, we are dealing with a right triangle. And of course, to be able to find the area of a triangle, I'm just going to show you this right now. We need to ca uh, calculate the area by using this formula right here, right? One half area of a triangle is one half base times height, right? So we're going to need that formula. And hopefully most of you remember that. But uh, here is the deal, right? Uh, the base of this triangle is this. We don't have that, and we don't have the height as well. So how do we solve this problem? Well, of course, I'm going to explain this in just one second. But uh, before we get started, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John, and I have been teaching middle and high school math for decades. And it really is my true passion to try to make learning math as easy and as interesting as possible. So if you need assistance in mathematics, Check out my math help program at tcmathacademy.com. You can find a link to that in the description below. And if this video helps you out, or if you just enjoy this content, make sure to like and subscribe, as that definitely helps me out. And again, uh, to be able to find the area of this uh, triangle, or of any triangle, we're going to need to know this side and this side, right? We're going to need to know the base and the height, and clearly we don't have that information. So how can we determine uh, these lengths? Okay, well, we only have a couple options here, and the first thing we can do is use trigonometry, okay? You're like, oh, awesome, trigonometry. That's all this uh, sine, cosine, and tangent stuff. Now, if you've never learned trigonometry uh, before, the great thing about trigonometry is that you can solve triangle problems when you only have one side of the triangle and like one angle, okay? Uh, now, we gotta be clear about something. We are dealing with a right triangle, okay? That's this little symbol right here. So this indicates that this is a 90 degree angle and this really changes everything for this problem. In other words, it's not a triangle like this, like an obtuse triangle. 90 degree triangles are called right triangles and we love right triangles because we know a lot about them, okay? Now, when you um, use basic trigonometry, we call these things right here trigonometric ratios. We, you, know, uh, you learn trigonometry around right triangles. Okay? Now, of course, this can be applied in more advanced problems, but uh, this is not that difficult of a problem using trigonometry, but there is a much easier approach, and I'll explain that in just one second. But uh, let's go ahead and just kind of um, talk about something else here that hopefully some of you were thinking about, okay? Another thing that we could do is be uh, thinking about the Pythagorean theorem, a squared plus b squared is equal to c squared. And if you were thinking, oh yeah, I could use the Pythagorean theorem. Yes, you possibly could. The problem is, let me kind of erase this trigonom uh, trigonometry stuff here. We know that we could use trigonometry for sure, but could we use the Pythagorean theorem? And if you're not familiar with the Pythagorean theorem, you certainly need to be familiar with it. Uh, anytime you see a right triangle, this should come to mind. Okay, now let's suppose real quick, uh, the lengths of this side was four, three, and uh, this was five, okay? Well, what the Pythagorean theorem states is that the sum of the squares of these smaller sides, so in other words, three squared plus four squared, is gonna be equal to the length or this, uh, the square of the longest side. This longest side right here is called the hypotenuse. Okay, so we could just check this real quick. Uh, three squared is nine plus four squared, of course, is 16. That's equal to five squared, which is 25. Nine plus 16, of course, is, uh, let me get a little sloppy here, uh, 25, and of course, that is equal to 25. Okay, so uh, Pythagorean theorem, you should always be thinking about the Pythagorean theorem when you see a right triangle. And of course, it's a fantastic theorem, okay, to use, but here's the, uh, the deal, okay? Uh, you need two of the three sides, okay? Here, I don't have enough information to use the Pythagorean theorem, but nevertheless, you should be thinking about it. So how else could we solve this problem? Well, again, we could use basic trigonometry, okay? This is like sine, uh, cosine, and tangent, but there is a much uh, better approach, a much easier approach. Matter of fact, let's go ahead and talk about that right now. Okay, so we know that the objective here is to find the area of this triangle. We need the base and we need the height. So let's kind of explore the triangle a little bit more. Now we know that this angle here is 90 degrees. So this is a right triangle and this angle is 30 degrees. Remember the sum total of all the angles in a triangle is 180 degrees. So if this is 90, this is 30, this has to be 60. So what we're dealing with here, let me kind of erase this for a second, is a special 
type of triangle. This is what we call a 30, 60, 90 degree special right triangle. And it is special, and you're going to see why in a second. So you want to remember this. This is an extremely important type of right triangle. There is another uh, very special triangle that you want to know. That's a 45, 45, 90. We're not going to uh, talk about that and uh, talk about that particular triangle in this video. But anytime you see a 30, 60, 90 degree uh, right triangle, and of course, by definition, this is a right triangle. Uh, alarm bells should go off. You're like, oh, this is going to be easy. And I'm going to show you why. Because we can apply a relationship uh, to solve for the lengths of the sides of a 30, 60, 90 degree right triangle. And this triangle is uh, tremendously important uh, in geometry and particularly trigonometry. Okay, it's not that uh, difficult to understand. And let me go ahead and uh, just show you intuitively how this works. Okay, now I'm not, I can give you like a formula, but I'm just gonna make this nice and easy for you. Okay, so let's take a look at a 30, 60, uh, 90 degree uh, uh, special right triangle. Now, uh, if you look at the sides, the longest side of a right triangle, again, is the hypotenuse, right? So we talked about that. And then we have these two medium sides. Now, now if you look here, here is the smallest, uh, most acute angle. It's 30 degrees. This would, uh, this angle here would be 60. So this angle is the shortest. I'm sorry, this side is the shortest. Then we have the medium side. Then we have the longest side, the hypotenuse. So here is how the relationships between the sides of a 30, 60, 90 degree special right triangle works. It's super easy. Here, uh, I'm going to show you with this example. Okay, so the hypotenuse here is always double the shortest side. Okay, so here's the shortest side. It's one. So the hypotenuse is always double the shortest side. I mean, that is so easy. I'm like, wow. Okay, now the medium side is always the square root of three times whatever the shortest side is. So in this case, it's going to be one times the square root of three, and we are done. Okay. Now a lot of you are saying, "Oh my God, Mr. YouTube Math Man, I can definitely use this to make my life uh, my life easier to uh, solve this problem." Well, you absolutely can't, right? We don't need to get into all that trigonometry and all that kind of good stuff. Although that is great, but let me go ahead and show you another example here. Okay, just so you totally understand. Okay, so here's the shortest side. Okay, the hypotenuse is going to be double the shortest side. So that's just three times two. That is the long side. And the medium side is going to be whatever this side is, three times, oh, it's always the square root of three. So there you go. Okay, so here, this is going to be super easy to solve. Okay, now remember, we need the base and the height uh, to figure out the area of this triangle. But right, uh, I do have the hypotenuse, right? So you're thinking, okay, well, the shortest side uh, is going to, the shortest side is always um, the hypotenuse is always double the shortest side. So I can just kind of re reverse this, reverse engineer this. So the shortest side, this side right here, has to be one half of the hypotenuse, right? So that would be eight or eight millimeters uh, divided by two, or one half of this is going to be the shortest side, which of course is four, okay? Because if this is four, to double that, that'd be eight, okay? So we already have two of the three sides. Now, some of you might say, well, I can use the Pythagorean theorem for this point forward. Uh, there's no need to because we are almost done getting all the sides of this uh, 30, 60, 90 degree right triangle. So let's go and finish this up. So we know that this side is four because when we double it, we get uh, eight. So the base is going to be whatever this is times the square root of three. So the base is four times the square root of three. And uh, of course, um, the units of measure here are millimeters across the board. All right, so now we have all the information we need to uh, find the area of this triangle. So let's go ahead and plug this in to our lovely formula. Area is, uh, area is equal to one half uh, base times height. The base, okay, is this right here, four square root of three, and the height is four. Okay, so let's go ahead and just plug this in right here. So one half of four times the square root of three uh, times four, four times four, is 16, and then one half of 16 is eight times the square root of three. And if I go into my calculator and take square root of three and multiply it by eight, I get approximately 13.85 millimeters squared. Okay, so this is an example of how to work with 30, 60, 90 degree special right triangles and pretty much 45, 45 uh, degree uh, special right triangles. They're even easier, but you need to understand these two special right triangles. And you also need to understand 
basic trigonometry as well. But um, hopefully, you know, you're like, oh, OK, uh, you know, uh, I never even knew about 30, 60, 90 special right triangles. And if you never uh, seen this before, well, you know, uh, this is really a, an amazing tool in mathematics, OK, uh, because it's the only type of triangle well, this and the 4545 that you can solve given only one length of the triangle without using trigonometry. OK, if I ha if we had a triangle, let me just kind of make something up here for a quick uh, just illustration just to show you how cool 30, 60, 90 degree right triangles are. Let's say I had a right triangle and this degree, uh, this angle right here was like 19 degrees and I had this side, let's say it was 12 inches, okay? Something like that. Well, if I wanna get this side and this side, if I wanna calculate the area of this, then I am going to have to use trigonometry, okay? Basic uh, right angle trigonometry, which is not that difficult, but there is no like shortcuts, okay? But when you have that 30, 60, 90, that is quite amazing. All right, now, if you wanna learn uh, more about special right triangles, a uh, couple of different things you can uh, check out. One, I have a ton of additional uh, videos on my YouTube channel and all this kind of stuff. Uh, but specifically, uh, some of you might be taking like a geometry course. If you are, I'm going to leave a link to my main geometry course uh, in the description. I'm also going to leave a link to my pre-calculus course, which teaches obviously com uh, full trigonometry. OK, that's like four or five chapters of advanced trigonometry. Both courses, I'll go over these triangles, but obviously my pre-calculus course, I get much, much deeper. But uh, if you just want to explore, maybe you've been out of school for a while, you just kind of maybe explore some mathematics, check out my new course, Math Skills Rebuilder. Okay, I started with basic arithmetic, then I teach you a ton of algebra and a ton of geometry, basic right angle trigonometry, and even some probability and statistics, all right? So that course is for those of you that might want to kind of get back into math or just kind of refresh your math skills. Okay, so with all that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.